So I finally want to do my um, Note 10 review. And I know this took a while, but I really wanted to get deep into the phone. And I wanted to talk about what I like, what I dislike, and what I feel Samsung did wrong and why I'm ultimately disappointed in this phone. But I still plan on keeping it because I feel it is a good enough phone to keep in my repertoire. <laughs> So, Samsung Galaxy Note 10. My likes and my gripes and why I'm not going to throw this phone in the air and snipe it, oh, <laughs> snipe it from afar, right? <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I just wanted to rhyme. But overall, the phone is a very, it's a very beautiful piece of hardware. It's not something I would say is my favorite look. Like, it's obviously boxy like every other note, which I do like. But it feels like a Sony phone. And I've been saying that ever since I got the phone. It feels more like a Sony phone, especially with, like, the rounded corners right here and it being flatter on the top and bottom than any typical note it feels more like a sony phone than it does a samsung phone than a note and that's something that's very odd to me and you know it's not necessarily a bad thing if you want your phone to look like that it, cool and i think it's a very nice design but it's just something that i wanted to point out the display is a bit of a wash for me it's 1080p and it's not that great. Like everyone always says every year, oh, Samsung makes the best displays. I've never felt that. Like I've never felt that at all. This phone has a good amount of like color shifting. And that's obviously due to this waterfall display crap that everyone all of a sudden wants to do and that's the hot new thing and it's like i just don't like it i don't care it's not functional it doesn't add anything functional to me oh it gives me more display to watch my content i don't care because it's just not something that's very it's eye poppy and it looks cool to be like oh my phone has virtually no bezel but i just don't care man it's it's just something that i look at and i'm like yeah cool but ultimately it's not something i would buy the phone for and i think that's something that is very telling in this day and age and i also miss the iris sensing the iris sensing on the note 8 was one of my favorite features people can say oh you had to learn a certain technique and able to freaking and able to freaking unlock it it really wasn't that bad all you for me personally, especially as someone with glasses, all I had to do was look down at the iris sensor and it would unlock pretty much as fast as my 10s did or even my G8 does, right? Where it'll be like, oh yeah, those are your eyes, boom. <laughs> and it was just that quick. And that was just cool. And then display fingerprint sensor is a, is a wash for me personally. The 6T pretty much won me over with how fast the f the in-display fingerprint scanner is on it. And I'm recording with it now. That's why you don't really see it in frame. Um, but I got the Note 10. And when initially when I got it, the fingerprint sensor was just hot garbage. Hot garbage, if I may say so myself, dear sir. Because... While now it's fast and it just feels good to use at first. And even now there's a bit of lag when it comes to how it just unlocks. Right. And I have to and I have to point it down like this because I have face unlock on. But there's the ever so minor bit of lag with the animation. And that's just something that I don't like at all. And when you don't have the always on display on, I have it on just for the sake of this video because I just recorded my G8 versus Note 10 video and I do want to 
and I just wanted to have it on just, you know, for Flash. But, but yeah, um, it's a very, it's very fast now, because I've, there have been a couple updates, I think, yesterday, to, or like a couple days ago, there was an update, and it made, it definitely made the fingerprint sensor faster, because now it just feels more responsive now, and that's something that I do indeed feel is a good thing. Now it's just um now it's just a matter of how um how accurate will it be, how consistent will it be? And you know there was that little controvert that controversy that Samsung had where um with certain screen protectors it would just keep the fingerprint on of of if you put your if you recently registered your fingerprint and if someone else tried to get into your phone with theirs, it would unlock the phone. That's what the update was for, and it. And while I don't care because I have the supplied finger, I supplied fingerprint sensor, the supplied uh, screen protector, it doesn't bother me. Um, that was a big deal, and that's something that should have been a big deal because that matters. <laughs> and I'm glad to see Samsung addressed it, but it's still something that I feel is a bad look, definitely. Um, face unlock is fine. It's just your basic, oh, it takes a picture of your face, your whole face, and then you look at the phone and it'll unlock. That's all it really is. It's nothing special. No time of flight sensor on the front, no dot sensor on the front, nothing like that. It's just your rudimentary face unlock, and that's fine. I, I initially had it on because the fingerprint sensor was that trash. I may end up turning it off now because the fingerprint sensor is just fine now. So, yeah. <laughs> um, let me talk about the cameras now. That's another thing that a lot of people would like to get this phone for, right, is the cameras. And the cameras are good. There have been people saying that the cameras are really bad. There have been people saying that they're the best things on the market. They're in the middle. Like, they're in the middle. Like, they're a good 6 out of 10. You get your typical Samsung, oh, it, oh it'll overexpose a photo, it'll oversaturate a photo, it'll make a white wall look like it was just peed on by a whole bunch of people or something like that, right? And it'll do that, and it'll just do what Samsung phones do. And that's totally fine. You also don't get manual video mode on your on the Note 10, which I feel is a not really a deal breaker, but it makes me less inclined to use my Note 10 as a video device because my V40 I shoot exclusively in manual video mode, and that's something that I feel is lost when you call something a productivity device and basically just have it be, oh, it's just our our previous phone, but it has a stylus and it has a bigger display. That's basically all they did. <laughs> Speaking of display, the 1080p panel on here and calling it the note for smaller hand users, right? It's kind of baffling because, and you can say you don't care about a quad HD display, more battery life, more haha, and stuff like that. But it's just something that I feel is not that big of a deal because it's like when it comes to phones these days, a quad HD display is not going to drain your battery that much anymore. In my pre in my, in the video I'm gonna upload after this with the G8 versus Note 10, it is kind of night and day between the G8 and Note 10. That the G8 just has better battery life and it has a higher qual higher resolution screen. Like, it, and sure it has a one milliamp out one hundred milliamp hour higher battery, but that shouldn't really come into account as to why that phone does better with battery life but yeah um the s pen is really nice it's really cool um i do like the gestures it's very gimmicky but it's not something that a lot of tech reviewers are just gonna say 
like they did with the hand ID on the and on the G8 and the hand and the gestures, but now I'm pretty sure they're gonna cream over the Pixel 4 having gestures or something like that. It's um, <laughs> it's it's just the S Pen, but it's Bluetooth, and you have gestures to you flick the you flick it up like a wand, and you raise the volume. You flick it down to lower the volume. You flick it you flick it to the right to like skip tracks or skip or fast forward to the next video or you do it to the left to obviously reverse. And it and they work well. And the battery life on the S Pen is actually really good. It's actually like I thought it would drain fast, but it doesn't drain fast at all. It is actually very it lasts a long time. <laughs> I think it actually lasted longer than the phone at one point in time. But to be fair, I think the phone was at like 60% battery life left. And every time you put it back into its silo, the Note 10 will just charge it. So keep that in mind. You don't have to connect it to a separate charger, connect it to the USB-C port or anything like that. It stays charged while it's in its silo. And that's something that's really nice. <sighs> What really isn't nice is the battery life, though. In particular, idle time. In my, I detailed this in my G8 versus um my G8 versus No Ten video that I'm posting after this, obviously, and it's very telling when a phone with a hundred a hundred percent milliamp hour better battery can get thirty percent battery better than you. That's something that I don't feel is right at all and you can and you can go in the comments and be like oh but it has the s pen and all these background processes that's the problem still to this day samsung has a whole bunch of bloat they just put it in the background like this, this is literally what they did and now and i'm gonna do this like i was supposed to do it in, in my no ted versus g8 video but it's at 9.13 MB right now, right? I'm going to clear out the RAM. And by the end of the video, I'm going to go back into this and see where it's at. RAM management is poor on this phone. I don't give a damn what you say. Oh, it has 8 gigabytes of RAM. It still makes the phone feel jittery, dog. Like, it, it's just something that I have to bring up. It makes the phone feel like crap. And that's something that just doesn't stop. Like, when is Samsung going to get RAM management right? Just plopping two extra gigs on top of six gigs of RAM does not make it better. Just like with the Note 8, plopping two extra gigs on top of four gigs of RAM didn't make it better. And I constantly have to clear the RAM. That's the problem. If I didn't have to do that, cool. You shouldn't have to reset your phone every week. Like, this is 2012, bro. These phones are powerful. Let them get better at RAM management. It's like I'm managing a, a, a Fallout mod loadout or something on here with terrible RAM management and stuff like that. It's just stupid. And it shouldn't be that way, man. Um... What else on here do I really want to talk about? In terms of call quality, call quality on here is actually pretty good. With the small slit that with the small slit that's the earpiece up here, you can't really see it in video, but it's definitely there. Look on Samsung's site and you can definitely see a slit there for an earpiece. But overall it's fine. I don't have the always on display on because there's no proximity sensor and even in the past, Samsung proximity sensors have always been garbage for me. The phone would never, st the always on, the AOD would never stay off in the in my pocket. Whereas my, say, Note 8 versus V30, my V30 is always on display would stay off. The Note 10 would just ran, Note 8 would just randomly turn on, and it still it still does that. It did that when I had this on, right? And that's why I just decided to be like, all right. Keep it on when I turn on the AOD when I tap the display to wake it. I just have this on for, you know, looks right now. So, yeah. <laughs> um, This feels pretty lightweight, too. 
like compared to my G8, this feels very substantial. It feels like a premium phone. This kind of feels like every other note. It kind of feels top heavy. It doesn't really feel balanced where this feels balanced. This doesn't. And that doesn't really matter to me personally. But to some people, a phone feeling having heft to it makes it feel more premium to them. And I understand that. But to me, I just don't really care. <laughs> so long as the phone doesn't feel like it's going to fuck is going to like break in my hand or anything like that. I don't really care. Um, audio. I would say the highlight of this phone is definitely the speakers. The speakers on this phone are really good. Really good. I wouldn't use them to like play at a party or anything like that. But watching YouTube, watching stuff like say a tournament of like either Quake Champions, Paladins or Overwatch or whatever you want to watch. Or fighting games and stuff like that. These are really good speakers, and that's something that I can't under I, I can't oversell enough. Um, the corded audio, you get you get USB C headphones in the box. I don't know where I put mine, so I can't really bring them out. Um, you get USB C AKG tuned samsung earbuds in the box you don't get a dongle but at least you get those um and honestly those are pretty nice dual driver earbuds they're not really like they're not amazing they're but they're not terrible and that's something that i definitely would say is good because i didn't really like the akgs that came with the note 8 I want to see if those come up on Samsung's site or not, because last time I looked, they didn't. So let me look at this real quick. Uh, AKG. Uh, sorry about that. That was gross. No? They... Hold on. No, they don't come up. They do not come up. And another problem I have with this is that they bill this as a flagship phone, but you don't see any cases for it in, say, Target or anything like that. I only use Target as an example because I work at Target. So I occasionally go over to the electronics section and see, oh, do they have any cases for the Note 10? And they just don't. But they have cases for the S10e. <laughs> like what? <laughs> but yeah. Whatever. You can find cases on Amazon and eBay. and Or Amazon and other sites. And you could go to a T-Mobile store. Or a carrier store of your choice. And just get a case there too. So it's not that big of a deal. But it's just something I've noticed. And that I feel is kind of baffling. <laughs> you know people like to buy their cases instantly why not put cases in stores that people go to anyway right now i could probably go to like a samsung experience store and like a best buy and find them but that's really that's kind of implied this <laughs> is so it's not really something that i would say is an excuse what else Honestly, there's not really anything else that I would say is bad or great about this phone. What makes this phone a disappointment, ultimately, though, is it's just a, it's, it's, it's a fine phone. And I think that's the problem. It's a good phone. It's not, say, when I got my Note 8, I loved my Note 8. I didn't go out of my way. Well, I kind of went out of my way to get this phone. But <laughs> I didn't go out of my way to pre-order this phone and get it like a week early like I did the Note 8. I got this phone for free virtually because I traded my iPhone XS with somebody for this phone, right? And this is a... It's, it's cool. 
Like, that's all it is. You basically get this to stay in the tech loop and stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. As far as I'm, as far as that goes, that's pretty much it as far as the video is. But, um, I'll probably put the, um, photos in the beginning of the video because I do want to show you guys. This is Sparta. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support. Hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday, whatever time of day it is in the area. Um, let me know if you have a Note 10, a regular Note 10, a Note 10 Plus. Let me know how things have been faring for you. And just so I actually do it this time, and as you guys can see, there is that bit of lag there. I'm going to go into here. 742 MB 749. And I'll clear it. Now let me show you guys just for reference what the G8 idles at when you do it, right? Three twenty two MB. That's kinda weird. Typically it doesn't do typically it doesn't do that. It was probably doing something. There was probably something happened. I don't know. But it typically doesn't do that. When I'm using the phone, for example, and then I clear it after like a few hours, it'll just be on like maybe 20 MB of RAM used. But whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below if you have a Note 10, Note 10 Plus. Do you love it? Do you not like it as much? Is it a disappointment to, do, is it a disappointment to you? Or is it the best note ever to you? Let me know. Have a good one, you guys.